Truckers XTV on air. We are now live in three, two, one. Welcome back to another episode of The Great Ace Attorney. In the previous episode, we just started out the end, so I had to leave Chief Justice's office as to, rec to recap what happened. Today's episode right now, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a tiger by the toe, if he holler, let it go, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, prison. Let's go meet the suspect. Uh, either way, now we're gaining back to the swing of things. So, uh, but technically there is supposed to be an order to this, how we can activate one event to another. So these are the British prison cells. Excuse me. Oh, they're ghastly. It's just like a dungeon. And having an experience in it in Japanese myself, I can assure you that our wooden cells feel a lot cozier than these cold stone walls. Oh, don't, Mr. Narohodo. You're making it seem worse. Apparently, our client is in this cell here. But it's so dark at the back there, I can't make him out. Wonder what he's like. Inmate 53, your legal representative is here to see you. Stop hiding at the back of the cell and show your face at once. Am I a cat, as yet, with no name? Calling me by a number, it's utterly unbelievably, unjustly unreasonable. I refuse to answer. Huh? Mr. Narahoda, what? What do you think is going on here? I have no idea, but I wasn't just hearing things, was I? That tirade of complaints was in Japanese. Who the heck are you? Um, excuse me, but who? Shh, quiet! They're all around, hiding. I know they are. They're watching, listening. Even now, I, I can sense them. Get a hold of yourself, man. I want to slap the heck out of you. Um, right, so can I- There you are! You've come to curse me, haven't you? Don't try to hide it. You're a ghost. A ghost? I can see why we locking him up. We mean you no harm, visitor son. Are you... Japanese by any chance? This is... This is... Beyond my wildest dreams! Okay, the nut job has finally came back to- Okay, never mind, I take it back. Forgive me for that outburst before, I'm so sorry. Oh, it's fine, we were just a little surprised, that's all. Imagine it! It's been 12 long months since I left my hometown and here I am, in a frightful fix in a foreign land. So here in the sweet sentimental thoughts of a compatriot's voice, here is this damp dark hello hole was a post monumentally moving moment. Hoo ha! Who could have guessed that the new client Lord Strongheart's assigned to us would turn out to be a fellow Japanese who's on Cuckoo Bill? Uh, what compassion my fellow countrymen show to dispatch a first class lawyer all the way from Japan to defend a mere foreigner student. A mere foreign student? Noble, nurturing, never failing Nippon. A first class lawyer? Oh dear, I think there's been something of a misunderstanding here. I would wonder, would you be so kind to tell us what's happened? Why you've been detained as a suspect, for example? Yes, yes, I can. I will. Shant, stay sullen and silent. I'm not quite sure I understand what he means, but... He seems happy. Yes, he does. I just hope he actually has a good reason to be. Thank you for your cooperation. I'm a lawyer, as you said. My name is Ryonosuke Naruhodo. And I'm Naruhodo's son's judicial assistant, Susato Mikotoba. I am a visiting student sent here by our government. Notably Naruhodo's name Natsume. Soseki Natsume. Soseki Natsume. So, Seki Natsume, son, what an unusual name. Call me Soseki, please. I'm a poet, you see, a writer of haiku. Said something of a nom de plume. 
a gnome de plume, you mean? An Elias? That's right, Naruhodo san. No, no, no! Don't be prosaic! It's much more refined than that! And Haiku. That really reminds me of home. Did I hear you say that you were a visiting student sent over here by the government? Yes, yes, that's right. A year ago, I was told to go and study English. First, I had to suffer that misery, and now this is beyond the pale. Suffered that misery? Did you not want to study here? No, I mean, I've had an interest in Great Britain for some t years, of course. Oh. But... Just because the government tells you to do something doesn't mean you can do it, no? What do you... what do you mean? If they told me to study English literature, that I could have understood. That's my field. But no, they told me to study the English language. Utterly, unbelievably, just to be unreasonable. Is there a difference between liter literature and language, or what? Only the other day I was told to send a report about my first year here. I tender a blank piece of pen to paper. <gasps> Wise words on white washi. You must, me, a man, you must be a man of great standing. Oh yes, some I'm often told. And often like to be told, it seems. Could you perhaps tell us exactly why you've been arrested? I didn't do it! I didn't commit the atrocious murder! Murder? Oh, no. No, no, no. It's alright. The woman didn't actually die, and did she? But she was stabbed with a knife right before my eyes. Before your eyes? You mean you saw the attacker? I didn't see anyone. What? If I did see the person who did it, do you think I'd be locked up here? Oh dear, it seems this case is becoming rather uncomplicated. Why me? Why me? Why did the silly woman have to be stabbed in front of me? The curse. It's the curse of London. It's incredibly incusively. Oh, I'm getting tired of this guy. So Seki was there at the scene, but he didn't see the attacker. It's vital that we find out more about the case. About the case. It was an accursed evening, just after the snow had started clear and heavy with fog. I had been in the bookshop to buy some books, and I was on my way back to my accursed lodging. Sure, the bookshop was not accursed too. As I was walking along the accursed, accursed pavement, I could make out the sole silhouette of another ahead of me. A woman wearing a green overcoat. She was, and just as I went to overtake her... That's a woman? She suddenly let out his little scream and clubs onto the cold, hot slabs of the stone at my feet. The flash! How terrible. I called, I called out to the woman, but she didn't move. It was like... Okay, enough with that. Slight exaggeration there, perhaps. Ah, the flash! I was terrified. I had to get away from there. So I ran as fast as my legs could carry me back to my crystal lodging. That's no good. They'll say it was, it was shameful, I know, to run away like that. Tell me, Sosiki-san, was the victim an acquaintance of yours? Don't be ridiculous. Do you think I know any of these fair-haired English and a young woman at that? I'm different, shy, timid, unsure. To I can't talk to people. I see! A young woman unknown to Soseki-san. And at the time it happened, who else did you see nearby? Did anybody pass you? Regrettably, apart from myself and the woman, I didn't see a soul. No one? Oh, great. So the victim was unknown to you, and there was nobody else on the street at the time. That creates something as a conundrum, doesn't it? Hmm, what conundrum? What do you mean, Sasaru-san? What's the conundrum? Well, if that was Soseki-san has just told us is true, there's something I can't explain. He says that he didn't know the victim, and that there was no one else at the scene. Then he apparently fled without having been seen. I did, I did! But, but if that's the case, surely this man has to be the culprit. Oh, you! 
What did you just say? Nothing. I didn't say anything. Oops. Or else I thought that a little loudly. Actually, that's not what was troubling me. What I was thinking was, how did the sexy son actually come to be arrested? Sorry? He didn't touch the victim, and there was nobody at the scene to see him. How did the police ever discover that he was there in the first place? Oh yeah, she's right. It... It was him. The accursed great, great detective, he led the police to me. <gasps> of all the black luck. Black luck? A cursed great detective. Could it be... I shall never forget that man's name as long as I live. With his haughty laugh and his self-proclaimed greatness. Brash, big-headed, bushy buddy, busy buddy, be gone. May you be a cursed until the end of your days, Herlock Sholmes. I knew it. It's a Sholmes? Airlock Sholmes. Well, I didn't expect to hear that name from this man's lips, that's for sure. It was the morning after the nightmare had unfolded on the pavement before me. I was gnawing on a silver heart of cheese when some man suddenly burst into the door. They started shouting at me. This is the police, put the weapon down. Yes, it was a thin silver, and yes, it was hard. I was eating a weapon. I <coughs> cough on that. You clearly had a trying morning yesterday. And there he was, in the middle of all the policemen, grit gritting like a Cheshire cat. That's Herlock Sholmes. It's actually Herlock Sholmes. His English. I've, I've since found out that he's a famous name in detention here in London. Detection. Yes, the great detective is really well very known. And his overly sharp mind match to deduce my whereabouts, apparently. He thinks I'm the knife-wielding madman, me, this weak, stupid kitten of a man. I wonder what reduction possessed him, led him to this conclusion this time. Do you mean to say that Mr. Shum's seduction was the only reason the police arrested you? That would be really most unreasonable. Well, um, the thing is... I was I was thrown into a panic when they barged their way in. Of course you were. That's only natural. I was terrified and trembling, and they kept throwing questions after me. In, in impossible English. Fain, fiendish foreign film. I don't know what he's going on anymore. Well, we are in England. You can't really blame them for questioning you in English. Good point, good point. But my mind went blank. I knew I had to answer, but I didn't know what to say. So I just kept repeating things like, yes, I do, and I'm fine. Next thing I knew, I was in manacles before I knew I was thrown in here. Oh dear, I'm afraid that's hardly surprising. I'm fine. He's not fine now. Mr. Naruhodo Esquire. Oh, you can just call me Naruhodo. And we're speaking English as simple, mister, is more than enough. Oh yes, um, right. Yes, they've, they've really got to me. This country is poisoning my mind. But please, I beg you to offend me in court tomorrow. You can tell them what really happened. You'll do it, won't you? Well... Why? Why? Why is it hard to say yes to me? Well, the thing is, I'm just a student like yourself. On a study tour. A uh, student? I have to defend a case in the Old Bailey, only the one though. But at this moment in time, I really don't know what I'm supposed to believe in. I'm confused about what justice in this country even means. Oh, Naruhodo-san. I'm not even from the foreign student who was supposed to be here. I'm a sort of locum lo lawyer, I suppose. <gasps> but the armband, the mark of defense lawyer from our great empire. It's a keepsake for the man who should have been here. He was my best friend. A keepsake? I know exactly what they're saying about me. Oh, who do you mean? The lawyers, all the British defense lawyers, they won't defend me. Goodness, why? Why do you say that? For the same reason as you noted before, when it happened. 
There was only the victim and myself around, and I ran away from the scene of the crime. I'm not a fool. I know it looks as though I may be the culprit. It must be very hard for you, Soseki-san. And anyway, I'm a student from overseas. I'm just a foreign nobody to them, someone not to be trusted. I heard them openly laughing at me before, in my earshot without comp compunction at all. Any trial for this man would be a waste of time, they said, and of course the foreign did foreigner did it. They even had the gall to say the man doesn't understand half of what's being said anyway. That's awful. <laughs> They're wrong. I've studied more English than half of the policemen out there in the streets. I've traveled halfway around the world to learn more about these people's country and its great history. But no one here wants to listen to the man with a strange accent. That's all hate me. So at the very least, I'd like to entrust my faith to someone who can listen to me in my native tongue. You can do it, couldn't you? When I looked into your eyes, I can see it. I can see what you've been through. Soseki-san, it's just that... Give me a little time, please. Huh? I'll do what I can for the time being. What do you mean? We shall investigate the case as thoroughly as possible. If we can find some clues, it will give us much better chance, I'm sure. Oh yes, yes, thank you. I'll be here alone, waiting for you. Welcome student, Mr. Naruhoto Esquire. We should be going then, Naruhoto-san. We have a case to repair for. Uh, let me see. Oh, that ain't gonna do a thing. Alright, next up, Briar Road. These are the coldest drinks of Britain. It's cold. Real cold. So this is where it happened. Briar Road. Ah, look, Mr. Naruhoto son. Look at that regulation metal helmet. It's unmistakable. The men of Scotland Yard are, are here. They're investigating as we speak. That is that is their job, you know. But Mr. Naruhoto, to see one with my own eyes, they are often depicted the adventure of Herlock Sholmes, but I never dreamt I ever come to this close. <laughs> to be a real Bobby's helmet. What? The helmet? <laughs> of course. I have to try one one day. Well, I hope your happy dream comes true. What's the Japanese delegation doing here? Oh, Inspector Gregson. This isn't on the tourist trail, as I'm fairly sure you're well aware. Yes, of course. We're here to investigate. Well, you've been holding the cells, then? What do you make of the criminal? He's not a criminal, as you put it, Inspector. He's a suspect. Huh, well, see about that. You Japanese like to stick together, I suppose. I'll do what you will, it doesn't bother me. The blokes in court tomorrow, whatever happens, and the verdict's a foregone conclusion. Uh, the stone cold air of rejection. Take heart, London's at this time of year is full of stone cold air. That makes it worse somehow. Tell me about Scotland Yard, Inspector. Ever since I read about the adventures of Herlock Jones, I've been fascinated by the place. The Yard is the most sophisticated police and organization you'll find anywhere in the world, ma'am. Oh, and you know I've always dreamt of wearing a real Bobby's helmet. It does make them look the part, seeing the policeman there with the helmets on. You suddenly get the sense that this is a man who will take no sense of his duty of protecting the city. Nonsense. Oh yes, doesn't that doesn't he look wonderful? Being a London Bobby is hard going, I can tell you. Oh really? First thing in the morning, you know what he does. Goes around, rouses all the laborers on his beat so they can get off to work. What? He wakes people up? Yep, raps on the windows with a long ball, dead it myself, going back to bed. I had no idea. 
The Bobby works for the people of the town. It's just another one of his duties. After that, he starts tirelessly patrolling the streets all day long. He has to cover 20 miles a day. That's the regulation distance. I can't really imagine how far that is, but it sounds like a long way. Let me see... 20 miles, that's approximately the distance from Tokyo to Yokohama. On foot? That's... that's definitely taking things a step too far. And when it gets dark, of course, he has to import... has the important lob of, job of lighting all the gas street light lamps. Oh my... I suppose in between all those duties, Bobbies are expected to investigate ca cases as well. And chase after criminals trying to evade them. Trade them to evade the law. I'm not sure you can call it in between exactly. More alongside, but yes. They're expected to handle those jobs as well. We do have men killing over them from time to time, I admit. I always dreamt of wearing one of those helmets, as I said. But it's with a heavy heart. I shall have to relinquish that dream to you, Mr. Narahodo. Your heavy heart will be in my heavy head if you do. It happened at around 5 in the evening, two days ago, just there on the open bit of pavement. The victim, a young woman, was stabbed with a blade from behind. It is right. It is. It is. Is it right? The lady is still unconscious now. You mentioned that she's being treated in the hospital. We may have to see her, just in case. I never said she was a lady. Truth is, unless she comes around pretty smartish, we won't be able to find out how much about her at all. I suppose that means they haven't been able to take a statement from her. Of course. Here's a map of the local area I happen to have on me. Uh, you can take it if you want. Really? Are you sure? It's George's policy to give lawyers, defendants, suspects, so on, bit of information to go on. I haven't actually accepted the job yet, but still. Thank you, Inspector. We gravely accept. William Robbins? Anyway... As far as we know, there was no one else on the scene other than the victim and your fellow countrymen. So who did it, do you think? Not much of a head-scratcher, is it? Well, I know Mr. Nasume is claiming to have not seen anyone around, but... But just because he didn't see anyone, it doesn't mean we can be sure that nobody else was present. I'm sorry to have to tell you, but we most certainly can be sure. How? Because, ma'am, the prices, precise moment of the stabbing didn't go unnoticed. It what? We have two very reliable witnesses, no less. Ah! It was a typical foggy London day, and your client obviously didn't see them. There were witnesses now? Who are these witnesses, Inspector? A fellow and his wife, and the man one of the most reliable and respected residents of all London. He's a copper from Scotland Yard. Ah! A policeman? That might change things. And this policeman just happened to be there at the exact moment the woman was attacked? Nothing peculiar about that, ma'am. Part and parcel of being a hot bobby. Catching them, banging, the act, and all that. Um, do you think it might be possible for us to ask the policeman a few questions? Be my guest. You can ask him what you like. In court tomorrow. Oh. I have no doubt he'll be summoned as a witness. So that'll give you something to look forward to. That's then. He had no intention of letting us meet the man beforehand, it seems. Policemen witnessed the incident. As your judicial assistant, I must warn you that this could make our job very difficult. Yes, as a non-judicial judici judicial assistant, I could have warned me that too. Oh yes, one more thing, Inspector. What? The person who led you to the suspect, I hear that was Mr. Herlock Sholmes. What are you bringing him up for? Was it something I said? The color has drained from his cheeks. Who did you hear that name from? Oh, well, um, it was Mr. Natsume who mentioned it. He said that Mr. Shones was with the police when they entered his lodging. 
I'm sure it was the result of Mr. Shum's inspirational great deductions. Fiddle faddle! Uh. The man's an amateur, and I'm getting sick and tired of him showing his mug everywhere. Oh. I don't know where he gets his information from, but he turns up at the scene of the crime, wanders around spouting incomprehensible rubbish, and before you know it, he claims to have solved the case. Yes, he's quite astounding, isn't he? He is a great help to Scotland Yard, though, isn't he? Gibble gabble! Ah. Ever seen this before? Oh, yes, that's Rant's magazine. A wonderful publication in which the adventures of Herlock Shumps appears. Yes, well, that wonderful publication of yours put it, sees fit to include several of your detectives in the stories. And the so-called great detective makes a mockery of all of us. If you ask anyone at the yard, it's a misadventure to be included in the, any Herlock Sholmes tale at all. Well, I suppose they're an element of that. We work our sucks up, every one of us, only to be affronted by the public thanks to the obnoxious detective. The man as dangerous to us, to us at Scotland Yard as he is to the, our criminals. That can be really true, can it, Inspector? Clearly, the great detective and the police have a complex relationship. The twitchy Japanese bloke goes on trial tomorrow. Are you going to defend him or not? Well, um... Makes no difference to me, but I will just say this. No London lawyer worth his salt would touch that case with a barge pole. Because the prosecution is being handled by the Reaper of the Bailey, you mean. There's no way to save the man now. It's a waste of time trying. It is all a bit strange, though. Sorry? The Reaper. He hasn't appeared in court one for a good few years now. Yes, we did hear something about that effect. And the only people he usually bothers with are the real scum, the master criminals, the violent ones. Master criminals? The violent ones? That's right. He handpicks his victims, only deals with those guaranteed to go to the gallows for their sins. But Mr. Natsby wouldn't hang for what he's accused of, surely. That's my just my that's just my point, Sunshine. Yes, the young woman was stabbed, but it didn't kill her. Couldn't even say the intent was there. So this isn't the sort of case I'd be expecting the Reaper to want to sink his teeth into. For what to be a better phrase. Well, it's not exactly a minor infraction, is it? No, there's got to be more to it. For some reason he's taking an interest. Really? What sort of reason, Inspector? You think I can tell what's going on inside the head of that Lord of Darkness? You'll have to ask him yourself at tomorrow's trial. Are we really going to have to face the Reaper again? The Lord of Darkness as he put it in? Well, I don't think we're going to get any more useful information out of the detective. detective. Mr. Narahodo, can I make a suggestion? Oh yes, what is it? Well, it seems to me that we must speak with him about this. By him, do you mean Mr. Sholmes? Yes, Mr. Herlock Sholmes, exactly. Look at those shining eyes. You can't wait, can you? Well, Mr. Natsume did blame Mr. Sholmes for all this, didn't he? Yes, he did. He really did. Which makes him an involved party in the case. Are you just going to ignore that? I hope not. I assure you, it's not simply myself a desire to meet Mr. with Mr. Sholmes again. The trouble is, we have no idea of the man's address even. So how- It's Baker Street! How did you know that? It's in the stories, of course. 221B Baker Street, the most famous address in the world. Oh, I see. Well, there's nothing to stop us from going, I suppose, but why is it in the publication of a magazine? We better try to find our way there before Sasato san gets any more excited and unpredictable. Hoorah! I'll summon a carriage! So we're, we're so we're to have a reunion already with the great detective, Mr. Herlock Sholmes. And with that, we'll end the episode right. Ooh. We'll end the episode right here. Like, subscribe, check out 6CB, and I'm signing out.